Hello, good day. Welcome to the first Q&A where I try to answer a few questions based on common themes that I would see. So yeah, this is the first time I'm doing it. I've seen other channel do it, so I figure why not? Um, there are questions that come up time and time again over the years I've had this channel, so I figure why not do like a Q&A kind of thing. So sorry I didn't send out and say like ask me questions, but um, for future Q&A, maybe you can send and ask me some questions and then I'll accumulate them again and answer them periodically. Maybe a quarterly Q&A or something like that. We'll see. But let's jump right into it. Today's Q&A um, is being posted in November, so I decided to call it 2022-11. So here are the broad themes that I'm going to be covering. Um, Basically, I'm going to talk about content formatting and organization because, you know, I've seen questions around that or I also want to share ideas of what I'm going to be doing in the future or what I'm trying to do now or what I've done in the past. When there are questions about examples and my thoughts there, um, people are asking for examples, either specific examples or examples in general. And then uh, talk a little bit about the kind of reviews that I see, um, what kind of category I think they fall into and so on. And then a grab bag of stuff, I'm going to say just miscellaneous stuff. So when it comes to content and organization, um, there are like a couple of things that fall out there. And that's just a general video organization and naming, I think. And then things about editing. And that has to do with my editing, of course. Um, like whether the code speed, like when I show code is too fast or too slow. Um, the size of the video, people have to talk about how long the videos are or whatever. And then things like font size, like how big things are displayed. And so if we sort of drill down into like the naming and organization a bit, the way I try to organize things is as follows. Um, within the channel, which is called Triversity, and I'm looking to rebrand. So um, I'll talk about that a little bit later. And there are several playlists. Um, there's a Flutter playlist, there's a Go on the Run playlist, there's like an embedded programming playlist, a whole bunch of other playlists, too many playlists that I probably have time, well, I definitely don't have enough time to put content into all, but that's the highest organization under the same channel. I could probably have created multiple channels and have one specifically for Go, another channel for embedded programming, another channel for um, Flutter, but you know, maybe I'll do that in the future. But for now, is on the Shriversity channel, I have several playlists. And under each playlist, um, let's say you have a playlist called Go on the Run, as an example. Remember, there's like Flutter playlist embedded. So that would be an example of a playlist. Under each playlist, I try to categorize things into sections. And so specifically, if we look at Go on the Run, a section is something like Kubernetes or Docker or um, security, um, binary encoding, that sort of thing. Those are all sections. And then sections are further divided into episodes. Now, honestly, you can say everything is just all episodes, and then I just group a bunch of episodes into sections, and then group a bunch of sections into a playlist. You can think of it that way. Like everything is really just an episode, right? Think of it like a series on TV where every show is, is just an episode within that series. And so, um, that's sort of like what's happening here. And so a more specific example of an episode would be like within Kubernetes when I'm talking about pods or configuration or services. Um, now, if each one of those things were just one video, um, then that would be it. It would just carry a name and that would be the episode. But because some of these things are a little bit big, the episodes themselves, um, they need several parts. And so for pods, there were three parts to it, right? Pods part one, pods part two. But if the thing is really small, I just call it an episode and that's it. Now, uh, regardless of whether we're talking about episodes or parts in an episode, um, I just give it a video name. And so a name might be something like episode, that's what the EP is for, episode 26, that's for the section that's in, and 05 is for that episode. So each episode is sort of number within the section that it's in. And so within section 26, you're going to have, um, you know, episode one, episode two, three, four, five. 
but I still give them sort of the name. So let's say pod was episode 25. It was like the fifth thing we covered within that section. And then because there were multiple parts, well, you know, part one, I call it like zero one, and then that was like Kubernetes pods, um, part one. Now, what you will notice is here is I'm trying to be pretty practical in my view. Not everyone is gonna agree with this. People are gonna think you should have a better naming system, blah, blah, blah. That's fine. I'm open to those suggestions. Anything that's better, I'll do it. What is missing from this is any sort of clickbait type title. And this is bad because one of the reasons, the, re the channel is suffering from growth for many reasons, but one of them is that I do not do clickbaity type of um, title names. Um, you don't see me do things like the only way to name pods or do pods or the best way to create a pod or all you need to know about Kubernetes or all you need to know about pods, those sort of things. But if you look into the recommendation, even from YouTube about how you drive viewership and everything and growth is to have names that draw people's attention and get bubbled up to the top in the search. And it's given it names like the only way to do X, Y, and Z. Because when somebody's looking for Kubernetes and pods, they, they don't really find this name, right? They don't, they don't probably look for KHS pods. They probably look for just Kubernetes and pods or whatever, right? And um, you know, I could still type out Kubernetes and pods there, but even if my video come up, came up in a result, People are unlikely to click on it just because, you know, you got episode 26, yeah, da, 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 as opposed to like all you need to know about Kubernetes part. Like if I named it that, soon as somebody saw that title, they're like, ooh, let me think. So why don't I do that? Um, I, I, I want to teach people things. I want people to get excited about learning things. And as much as I want the channel to grow, I don't want to do that at the expense of trying to just generate clickbait. Um, I appreciate the people who find me and stick with the channel. And, you know, if I lose a few other people just because I don't want to get into the whole game of clickbaity type thing, it's less stress for me also, honestly, because I'll, I'll, I'll drive myself not trying to think like, okay, how do I outdo myself? And that is a real problem, honestly, with a lot of content creator is how do you stay relevant and create things that always generate viewership and so on. And that's one headache I do not want. So um hopefully over time the platform gets better and people can actually find good things and hopefully with the people who are viewing the content and like it they comment it and so on help it bubble up to the top based on the fact that it's got good reviews more so than because it has some click bt title so that's what i'll say about that no criticism to anyone else who's doing it i'm just saying why i don't do it and I'll try not to do that. I don't plan to ever change that stance. Um, finally, um, because some of the playlists can be really big and go on the run is one of those, um, I don't see it end to go on the run, but what I might do is end going to run as a playlist and just keep doing the sections as their own playlist. So this brings me to what you see is happening now. I started creating playlists for each section, and that is because um, we have so many sections on the go on the run, people would sort of jump in and then go, hey, where do I start? And so even though the name would seem to indicate like the order of doing things, I still think it's a lot of videos. It's probably like 200 videos. And so it's still difficult for people to figure out like where to start. So by having this playlist have carried a name of the section, um, then it's probably a little bit easier. People can say, okay, I can start with playlist 001, um, whatever that was about, and then go to playlist 002, blah, 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 blah. For the videos, it doesn't matter because you could take the same video and stick it into multiple playlists. So when I create a playlist for the sections, that video is actually in the grow on the run playlist but it's also in the playlist for the section and that helps because now the playlist for the section actually have fewer videos because each playlist is just for a section than the grow on the run playlist itself which have all the videos within or the, all the episodes within that playlist and so that could be hundreds and hundreds of videos so that's what i'm saying at all maybe going forward the go on the run playlist itself should probably go away and just stick with things like sections as the playlist name. And then 
instead of having multiple playlists under the same channel, go with multiple channels. So that's even better organization. So it just means that you'll have to follow me around and subscribe to all the, my channels if you do like me that much. So, um, so that's just taught right now in terms of whether I should do multiple channels, but I think definitely the multiple, the playlists help for sections. It just means that if I stick with one channel, it, we're gonna have explosions of playlists. So, you know, that can be, and that's why I think maybe multiple channel channels make sense. But I do like the idea that a playlist shouldn't have like a hundred videos probably. That's probably a little bit hard for people to manage. Sometimes I get people asking me for more examples and the more examples fall into like, uh, you know, more examples on that, on progress or something, or financial examples. Um, and those were called miscellaneous videos because they don't quite fit in with the overall sort of structured team. So sometimes I want to show something in Go, like a library or a package or something, I might do something like a miscellaneous video. So like I think of it like a filler video. And people ask for more um, examples or something along that line. It's like with Nats, I did a test of teaser videos. So I plan to actually do a section on Nats. And so that's going to happen. Uh, the financial stuff, I was just playing around with some packages to try and build a sort of a little financial application for myself, you know, in terms of pulling some financial data and stuff. And I decided to show people that, but I am not a financial guy, so I wouldn't really know how to really build out. A f I mean, I could spend the time doing it, but I really don't have a lot of time. So trying to build out a financial application is probably not the best um, use of my time right now. doesn't mean that all the door is closed on that one, but just keep in mind that oh, that's sort of outside my area of focus. So yeah, I can sort of still do miscellaneous stuff on specific financial packages or things like that, or formatting um, of currency, that sort of thing. But the actual financial application, and there was someone that asked about the actual financial application, that's probably going to be more of a stretch. I tend to do, if I do something for myself, I can show that. So if I ever build like a full financial application for myself, I'll do that. The one I was building is just really to, to grab some stock information and store it in a certain way and blah, blah, blah. It wasn't really anything crazy or impressive. They didn't really have much of a UI except for the simple UI I showed. Um, so then people ask for a more complete example of web applications. Um, this would probably happen. The problem here is trying to build out a full application from beginning to end. Um, right now I'm trying to go through the pieces of trying to structure apps and the things that you would need to build out application or enterprise applications. So the Kubernetes and the Docker and using NATS soon and all these other things. So those are the components or pieces you left and you'll need and what web services are in the future. We're going to be covering that sort of thing and authentication and stuff. So those are all the pieces you'll need for a full web application, but trying to build, come up with a web application and build it right now, it's probably not going to happen until I finish these set of pieces and then I could show how the whole thing sort of come together. So none of my examples are really fully fleshed out because they're meant to just illustrate one small piece. Like when uh, we started doing Docker and Kubernetes, I had a bunch of small applications that, you know, it was like, oh, a server and a client and, and this and that, but they weren't really doing much. And that's because they just serve the purpose of trying to show if you have multiple applications that need to talk to each other, how you can sort of make that happen. And then of course, their requests for all sort of application that is sort of outside the scope of what I'm doing here or my expertise. So I'm not closing the door on any of that stuff. So there are things that I'm also interested in that I haven't covered here. I'm interested in blockchain and uh, I was tempted to do a set of videos on that a few months ago. I might still do it. I'm instead interested in artificial intelligence and deep learning. And so I might do some videos on that, um, but that will be a whole learning we're going to learn together. For example, about two years ago, I started writing like a package for like neural network and so on. I don't think I'm like continue along that way and trying to develop it from scratch. I might sort of take it, um, go into the AI stuff from more like the application and usage point of view, as opposed to trying to develop everything from scratch, you know, back propagation and all this other stuff, because that's, you know, focusing more on the fundamental principles. And um, I don't have the schooling. I, I'm just teaching myself that stuff. And so um, maybe in the future I might do that. But if I ever get back to the AI type of thing, it's going to be more like using existing libraries and stuff to try to do things like image recognition or, or come up with a model that I can use.
the door is not closed and that sort of thing but that's probably a little bit further out after i finish closing out some other things on to reviews generally um when i get reviews i think they're mostly positive or maybe unless i'm just a generally positive person so even negative things i read are positive i don't know but they're mostly positive um people seem to really like um the content and how it's presented and how i illustrate things and i do that because i try to teach and illustrate things the way i would like to learn them myself so that's how i sort of take it in and then ask myself how can i teach this to someone else or how would i like this to be presented to me and then that's the approach i take so how you see me present things is how i imagine i would like to learn things and so and how i enjoy learning material myself if i could find it that way and so i'm just trying to present it that way and so people are you know generally like oh this is awesome it's the best thing since sliced bread no one ever said the best thing since sliced bread but you said you know this is really good <laughs> somebody said this content is worth like a million dollars you know it's like netflix and all that sort of thing right and um, the best go channel of all that's on youtube i don't know if they've tried all the youtube channels or whatever but it's sort of like that's how they feel and i appreciate so thank you very much um other ones that are on the positive side are generally like, you know keep it up um you know this look good keep it coming that sort of thing my approach to feedback is that hey let's look at what i'm doing that needs improvement and what are the things that i'm doing that i should immediately stop doing and if there are things i can improve on absolutely um slightly on the negative side sometimes people go oh this is too fast blah blah, blah. um even have problem with how the videos are organized and so on and that's it's good to have both positive and negative feedback in regards to the speed let me just address the speed issue for a bit um keep in mind that i will never be able to come up with a correct pacing that suits everyone there's too many people watching the video so what i try to do is come up with a speed that i think maybe works for most people and certainly i think works for me if i were to listen to my video which i do sometimes um so the nice thing about youtube is that you can slow it down or speed it up so i don't think most people remember this or realize this so if i'm speaking too slow for you just speed it up if i'm typing too fast for you slow it down um the other thing too is don't forget when it comes to the code i've already typed the code up and pushed it into the repository so if i were to just record me typing the code live at the speed at which i'll type it there'll be a lot of pauses and it's going to take a longer time and the video is going to be much longer which people have complained about that the videos are too long so you can't have it both ways you can't have me say that oh i'm typing too fast when i speed it up the coding part and then other people complain that all the videos are too long so nobody's going to be happy with those so i try to come to a middle ground so that is why code and like coding i speed it up and no longer show me typing the code live because it's already in the repo even before you see the video i've already posted the code so you just have to go get it you, if you choose to clone it great if not just look at it and then type it up and you'll be right there with me you can look and see what i'm going to type so i think that's all trying to slow down or type the code real time speed is just going to waste time it just make the video unnecessarily longer and i used to do that but and there's no need for that i talk a little bit about how i organize the videos in terms of you know episodes and if there's a better way to organize it i'd love to hear feedback on it but people always talk about you know you could tag it this way and tag it that way i still have to spend some time figuring out how to tag stuff properly so the youtube algorithm finds it but i do put some tags on there i think i tag it as goal lang i tag it as traversity things like that tag it as kss or kubernetes you know that sort of thing um that people might be looking for but other than that yeah um naming an organization is still a challenge and i'm trying to work on it so um even though i put down the negative doesn't mean that you shouldn't talk about it or try to give me some feedback there on the miscellaneous um i tend to get some question about like the configuration or how i have my system set up or the tools i'm using and that sort of thing either like my id um have a tendency or a preference right now to use vs code um you know i know to use other ids like intellij and stuff but i just really like vs code right now 
uh, for the past couple of years, and so that's what I tend to use. And sometimes people ask about what teams I'm using or plugins. Um, in a minute, I'm going to show you the list of VS Code teams that I have, and it's going to be up to you to investigate them yourself. I use way too many to explain all of them, and you shouldn't install all of the ones I have because if you're not doing the same thing that I tend to do, or you don't have the same interests, you're just probably going to slow down your IDE. My IDE is not slow, but why install things that you don't need? Um, so many people ask about the terminal. Um, I use iTerm um, for Mac, um, but if you're in Windows or Linux, you should be able to install different terminals that give you some of the same capabilities. Um, I'm going to mention a few um, here that works for all the platforms like Mac, Linux, and Windows. There's Alacrity, there's um, Kitty. Um, I was playing with Kitty. I will still continue to play with Kitty because I think it's doing the same sort of thing that iTerm does. And I'm looking to see if maybe there's something else there that maybe I don't know about that maybe iTerm is list missing that I'm not even aware I'm missing. So I'll keep playing with Kitty and maybe one day you'll see me use Kitty. But for right now, all my videos you've seen is iTerm. And I'll show how I split screen for my terminal because someone asked about that. And again, tools and utilities. I use a bunch of different things, applications. I can't show all of them, but I'll show a few of them. And um, maybe one day, um, and this is more about how to grow the channel and so on. Um, I'll have like a Discord. I'm thinking about having like a Discord um, channel. And maybe what I'll do is have a session where I just sort of go through the tools that I have on my computer and show people it. And maybe that's going to help me even clean up the tools that I have on my computer because maybe I don't need all those things that I have installed. Who knows, right? So um, yeah, and I have overlapping tools that you'll see in a minute. So let me jump to my command line and show you some of the tools that I have. So first off, like I said, I'm using iTerm tool for Mac. And people want to know how I like split screen and so on. So I'm going to show the keyboard on the key keys on the screen in the video, but it's command and D split the screen vertically like this. And if you have, um, you want to split it um, horizontally, you do command shift D and it split it vertically. So um, you can keep doing this. So if I do command shift D again, and not a vertical uh, horizontal split and a vertical split is just going to be command D. So uh, that's pretty easy. And if I jump over here, I can do the same thing. I could do Command D to split it vertically, Command Shift D, Command Shift D, Command D, and you can see I can just like split these up as um, much as I like. Um, to open a tab, I could do Command T, and that gives me a tab, and then I can go do the whole thing again, you know, splitting things vertically and horizontally. And so that's that. And in terms of closing a window, I could do um, Control D, Control D, Control D, Control D, and that closes um, the, the window. And then if I get to a tab, um, of course, if I do Control D, I exit that last terminal, it's going to close that tab. And so I could keep closing tabs this way. And it's sort of closing them, um, you know, in some sort of random order, I guess, or the order which you went through it. I don't know, but just click on the one that you want to close and then Control D. If I type something and I want to clear up the screen, um, you know, so I'm going to ignore that because I don't really care. But let's say I want to clear up the screen. I'm just going to type Command K and that clears the screen. So um, sometimes you type something and you want to jump back to the beginning. I type Control A that gets me to the beginning. Control E gets me to the end. And so that's basically how I move around in the terminal. For iTerm, there's also another thing like if I have a few tabs open, if I do command shift enter, it starts to zoom in to that one um, panel that I'm in. Um, and if command shift enter again, it sort of zoom back out. So you've seen me done that quite a few times um, very quickly. And so the way you know that how you're zoomed in is you see this little thing in the corner here. So <laughs> this is not really a tutorial on terminal, but since I'm answering question about the terminal I use, so I might as well show how to use it. I use ZSH as my shell, so that's another thing. And I use Starship now to configure my ZSH. Before I used to use all my ZSH to configure ZSH, but again, um, over time you change and move from one thing to another. Now, in terms of um, my 
things that I have installed, tools that I have installed. Well, um, let me just show you one um, K9S um, I use for tapping into my cluster, my Kubernetes cluster, and I can move around. I can look at logs and all this other stuff. I'm going to go into pods and deployments. Right now it's on pods, but you can easily switch to deployments by you know doing that, typing colon and whatever you want to switch to. And of course I could quit it, but um, all these things I install with brew. So in Mac, I use brew to install as my package manager. If I were to do um, brew list, this would list all the things that I've installed with brew. I could see it's quite a bit. Now, not everything that I have listed there, I install. So there are some, there are some libraries there. So if I do RG and I do minus V to enforce my selection and I do that I want to remove anything that starts with lib and I do this, now you will see that, but it's a straight line. So I'm going to do column and so it will show it like this. And so you can see there are a number of things that are installed. Up to you if you want to install any of these things. Um, you'll have to look into it to see. Not all of them I install, like I said, some of them are dependency of other things. So by installing one thing, it installed other things. So this is not all the stuff that I have as tools. These are just the one that I install with Brew. I have other one that I install with Go and you know by themselves with some script, shell script or something. I'm not gonna go over that, just kind of wanted to give you a quick look at some of the tools I have installed. Um, the other thing is my VS Code. So if you know, if you type, you install VS Code and you put it in a path, you could type VS Code, and you could just type code, sorry, and start VS Code from the current directory. You've seen me done that many, many times. So you can do help, and you can see all these other options that you can pass to VS Code. And one of them is this list extensions here. And so if I do this, and this is great in case you want to get a list of your extensions that are installed to send it to someone else or to install it on another computer, like let's say my work computer, I want to do the same thing, um, then I can do that. And so these are the list of the extensions I've installed in VS Code. I actually cleaned up mine recently because I was trying to send a friend of mine who wanted a list of the things that I have installed and I realized that there were some that I no longer needed, for example. Um, I was doing Kotlin for a little bit and then I installed a Kotlin extension, I removed it, blah, blah, blah. Um, so, those are a list of the things that I think. Now, in terms of font size and so on, it's always a challenge. Um, I was talking about, you know, some of the feedback I've gotten about um, speed and so on, but people will also talk about font, like can you increase the font? And that's a, a little bit hard to know, like what's the right size font, because I don't know what device you're looking at this on. If you're looking at the videos on your phone or a tablet and it's too small, then I can't really, increase the font size for you because majority of people are not going to look at the videos on their phone. Well, maybe I don't know that for sure, but I think most people are not going to look at the videos. I don't have that sort of metrics in YouTube. I think most of the people are going to look at this on their computer. Maybe some people like me also not only look at videos on their computer, but also on their TV. So on a large screen, uh, font is going to be a tricky one. So hopefully the font size that I tend to zoom into um, seems to work. The other downside of making it a large font is that it's going to wrap or go off the screen because as soon as you type a little bit of, um, you know, one of 50 characters or 100 or something, it's going to already reach the end of the um, editor. So, yeah, it's really hard to decide to zoom in and still be able to type enough without it wrapping around and then looking all weird. And there are other tools that I use. For example, I use DB Beaver. Um, D Beaver, so database Beaver, I guess. Um, to connect to different databases. It's really awesome. I really like it. it's open source. I mean, you can contribute also. I guess there's a page version too. And you can connect to different types of databases. So um, you can just go um, click on a new database connection and you can see you can connect to all these different type of data sources. So it's really, really awesome, really nice um, product. Uh, another tool that I use, um, Interchange you might see me, like I said, I have multiple tools that I use, some of them overlap. And so I use Insomnia and Postman, both of these are graphical um, RESTful endpoint testing tools for testing your endpoint and making calls to RESTful endpoint. But in addition to those graphical ones, you might also see me use HTTP many, many times. So um, that's also something else that I really like using from the command line. It's similar to curl, but 
I think much e easier. So um, again, more overlapping tools. I have stuff, something called Ranger um, that I also use. And it's really cool because I can use keys to without ra raising a finger from the keyboard. You can just sort of move around and navigate to things and you can you know, view files and that sort of thing. So it's really, really cool. So you could think of it if you're a terminal user and you like Vim, um, this is a basically a, a file navigation or file explorer for your terminal and uh, giving you all those same sort of thing. And you can search and a whole bunch of things. If you're looking for help, you can type question mark and then you can look at the key balance or the man page, for example. So uh, that's an option there. Um, Another one that I like is um, Brute, um, sort of similar, but I really use Brute for searching my directory when I'm looking for a large number of files. So for example, if I were to go back up here a bit and then back up here a little bit to go on the run root of this um, directory and I type BR, then I can start looking for, you know, all files that are main that go, for example, like that. Or I can just look for, um, something that like um, I can do pod and then part um, and so pod part and it would sort of show me files that matches those characters even though as you can see I didn't have to space them out I'm just looking for the words that are in there I can do other more interesting things like you can see I'm looking for the content for files that contain like main that go for example and um, it will show you that. Or if maybe if you know there's some very other specific thing within a application that you want, like encode, for example, you can say, I'm looking for files that have the, that content. And if it's a function, well then, you know, something like that. And so um, very cool. Again, one of many, I also have FZF, which is another sort of search um, program also. So I'll you to find um, thing fuzzy searching. So um, many similar overlapping application that I use, but you know, like I said, I can't show everything, but those are some of the tools that I use. Um, I have some plans, like I said, to sort of grow the channel. Um, that includes, but not limited to probably having a discourse channel, having some icons made, rebranding the channel. I'm still trying to think about what name I'm gonna use. I sort of don't like Stray Varsity anymore. I was thinking something like V on stuff because I, it's not going to be just go alone. It's going to be all the crazy stuff that I sort of like. So I don't know what the things are, but so it's just stuff um, or stuff with V. I don't know something. I'm going to try and figure it out. And maybe I might have to go with multiple channels instead of one. So maybe V on Golang, V on Flutter, V on this or V Flutter, whatever. I have no idea yet what will make, what will make sense. So hopefully you enjoyed this video. Please let me know with some comments what you think about the whole Q&A video. Should I do another one? Should I solicit questions for the next Q&A? And maybe do a Q&A every quarter maybe, just as a sort of a check-in to see, get the pulse of the channel. So yeah, let me know what you think about this. All right, take care. Good day, bye.